Did you know that dutasteride can be injected directly into the scalp? The major advantage of this being that you can get away with as little as one treatment session per month. The other advantage? You guessed it, far fewer side effects compared to the standard oral version. But is it as effective? Will it grow back your hair as well? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today, so stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGuard.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Now, just before we get into the video on the dutasteride injections, if you want to get access to the hair nutrition plan, then make sure to click the link in the description. You get 21 delicious recipes designed specifically for faster, stronger hair growth. The meals are loaded with nutrients like biotin, zinc, and collagen to make hair as thick and strong as possible. So if you are a regular viewer of this channel, you will have probably seen some of our past videos on dutasteride. Very briefly, dutasteride is a so-called 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, the same class of drug as finasteride. 5-alpha reductase being the enzyme that converts the testosterone into DHT or dihydrotestosterone. There are two forms of this enzyme, simply called type 1 and type 2. And where dutasteride differs from finasteride is that it inhibits both versions of the enzyme whereas finasteride inhibits the type 1 enzyme only. So dutasteride is potentially more powerful, lowering blood DHT levels by around 90%, which compares to around 70% for finasteride. But this increased DHT inhibition does come at a cost. Dutasteride is more powerful, it has a longer half-life, and presumably more severe side effects. For these reasons, and being that it's not licensed for boldness, dutasteride is far less commonly used than finasteride. But there are many men who do use it off-label. The most famous example being Ashton Kutcher, who admitted taking dutasteride for about a decade. Now, whilst the drug was successful in stopping his hair loss, Kutcher stopped taking it when he was trying to become a father. The reason being that dutasteride, just like finasteride, is known to adversely affect sperm levels. The other most common side effects include loss of libido, erectile dysfunction, and gynecomastia. But guys, did you know that it's possible to use dutasteride in a non-oral, non-systemic way? Well, it's called mesotherapy, and it appears to be a very promising way of getting around dutasteride's side effects. Now, guys, mesotherapy is a blanket term for a procedure that's been used going back nearly 70 years, since the middle of the 20th century. And it's when you use fine needles to deliver a series of injections into the subcutaneous fat, which is the layer of fat that sits underneath your skin. So it's a non-surgical procedure, and it's used to treat a variety of conditions, from skin rejuvenation to fat reduction, injury rehabilitation, and even improved circulation. Oh, and did I mention boldness? The most commonly injected substances include plant extracts, vitamins, amino acids, and homeopathic remedies. If you remember a few weeks ago, we actually made a video about carboxytherapy for the treatment of hair loss. Carboxytherapy is another example of mesotherapy, only instead of a vitamin, you're injecting carbon dioxide into your scalp. But in recent years, we're seeing the ever-increasing use of pharmaceutical medications in mesotherapy, just like dutasteride. Now, this is a treatment that obviously has to be carried out at the office of a specialist, so it won't be the cheapest treatment option. But the big advantage is that you avoid the daily hassle that you get with either topical minoxidil or finasteride. Typically, the injections are once per week at the beginning, spacing out to bi-weekly after a few weeks. And eventually, after three to four months, you can have the treatment once a month for maintenance. So guys, just a few weeks ago, we had the publication of this review paper by a team of researchers out of Spain and Mexico. The purpose of the research was to compare the standard oral dutasteride to this mesotherapy, also called intralesional dutasteride. Now guys, I do have to tell you that this is a very well-written paper. These researchers looked at all the major science portals to find all of the relevant evidence and they looked for randomized clinical trials that compared oral and intralesional dutasteride to placebos. And what they were really hoping to find was studies that compared oral dutasteride directly to the mesotherapy. In the end, 
after going through hundreds of research papers, they found eight such studies, five of them involving oral dutasteride and three mesotherapy. That being said, none of them were directly comparing the oral dutasteride to the mesotherapy. In all of these eight studies, a total of 1,627 patients were involved, of which 480 were in placebo groups and the rest received active treatment. Pooling together all of the data from the studies, the authors then concluded that oral dutasteride was about two times as effective as mesotherapy, 15.9 new hairs per centimeter squared compared to 7.9 for the mesotherapy. But when it came to the side effects, the intralesional dutasteride was superior and associated with far fewer side effects. Three out of the five oral studies reported lowered libido as a side effect, and erectile dysfunction was reported in four of the five oral studies. But none of the mesotherapy studies reported either of these side effects. Four out of the five oral studies also reported problems with ejaculation dysfunction, while again, none of the mesotherapy studies reported this. Basically, the dutasteride mesotherapy treatments were associated with no systemic side effects, just like you'd hope. So what is the takeaway from all of this? Well, I'll quote directly from the paper here. To date, the use of oral dutasteride seems to be the optimal treatment modality for androgenetic alopecia, since it appears to be more effective than intradelegional dutasteride. Side effects of systemic dutasteride have been widely studied and reported, making physicians and patients aware of potential adverse events. Intralesional route can be a feasible alternative for those unwilling to receive systemic treatment, avoiding the well-known systemic effects. Guys, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Have you ever tried topical dutasteride and how did it work for you? Did you even know that there was such a thing? And I've also linked to the paper in the description below, so do feel free to check it out if you do feel like diving deeper into the data. And guys, if you want to learn more about the eight steps that Will, the founder of HairGuard, took to reverse his hair loss, then check out the video on the screen right now.